Another broadcast we welcome the internet audience on X, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and other sources of media that are tuning into this broadcast. We are the Church of Christ, Church of the Beloved One, the King, and the Master. We are the ambassadors of Christ here to bring to you the good news of the one sovereign Lord. Let us open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly most gracious Father, Lord Jehovah, Yeshua, the Homashiach, we thank you and acknowledge you as the king. None is like you, none is above you. We humble ourselves before you this day as we continue in worship and give you all the praise and all the honor that is due. May eyes be open, my ears be open to the truth as we preach it, Lord, may it be heard the way it was delivered unto us and how it was dictated through the scriptures, through the Holy Spirit. And may someone ask, what can they do to be saved? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for another opportunity to come before you. We want to start off in our red hymnals. We're going to sing a scripture. Or we're going to sing a hymn mm -hmm. to put Jesus first in our life. Hymn 142. Hymn 142. I'm going to slow it down just a tad, just for those who aren't as familiar with the song. Slow it down a little bit. It's easier to pick up. Hymn 142. The world all about me has no allure. Its pleasure brings pain. Its wisdom is vain. I seek a foundation that steadfast and sure. I'll put Jesus first. In my life, in all that I say, in all that I do, throughout the world of toil and strife, by day and by night, through trust in His might, I'll put Jesus first in my life. The Lord died by salvation to win. He went to my stay to Calvary and bled. Redemption impelled me to give up all sin. I'll put Jesus first in my life, in all I say, in all that I do, throughout the world of toils and strife, by day and by night, through trust in His life, I'll put Jesus first in my life. I know there's a home for the ransom and blessed. When death is no more, when struggles are hard, for those who love Jesus and give Him their best, I'll put Jesus first my life in all I say in all that I do throughout the world of toil and strife by day and by night through trust in his might I'll put Jesus first in my life The words tribulations continue each day 
Though pleasure may call, though evil enthrall, His grace will protect me forever and ever. I'll put Jesus first in my life. In all I say, in all that I do, throughout the world of toils and strife, by day and by night, new trust in His might. I'll put Jesus first in my life. Amen. That's something we got to remind ourselves every day. This world wants to pull you in. It wants to take 25 hours out of your day. So we got to remember, always put him first before everything. The next song is going to be out of our blue hymn books. Our blue hymn books, number 41. Another one of my favorites. Walking up the King's Highway. Walking up the King's Highway. Number 41. My way gets brighter. My load gets lighter. Walking up the King's Highway. There's joy in knowing. With him I'm going, walking up the king's highway. Well, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure at heart. It's a highway to heaven. I'm walking up the king highway. Don't have to worry. Don't have to hurry. Walking up the king's highway. Christ walks beside me. Angels to guide me. Walking up the king's highway. Well, it's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure at heart. It's a highway to heaven. We're walking up the king highway. If you're not walking, Start while I'm talking, walking up the King's Highway. There'll be a blessing, you'll be professing, walking up the King's Highway. Well, it's a highway to heaven, none can walk up there. But the pure at heart is a highway to heaven. We're walking up the King Highway. Well, it's a highway to heaven. Don't you walk up there? Yes. But the pure at heart is a Amen. Thank you, Brother Spencer. To selection, opening prayer. I want to thank Brother Arnold for the precious Bible study. Yes, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I do and will please. Listen to him. We're going to um, have an offering, a love offering. And then we're going to remember the precious Lord's Supper. We want to prepare our hearts to give. We understand why we're giving. God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. He, uh, he told the Israelites to uh, 
make an offering of the first fruits, you know, to show that they uh, demonstrate that they trust in the Lord. And um, we want to be able to give back how our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ and God the Father, how he gave his very best. And he knows our heart. He knows a cheerful giver. And he's, sitting, he's watching our hearts right now. Yeah. We want to give our best. You know, and um, you know, there's a story in the Bible, Cain and Abel. Some offerings was not accepted. We want our offerings to be accepted. And we want to demonstrate our obedience to the Lord. And we understand why we're giving. We want to, we want to participate in what's going on at the assembly house. We want to show love, you know, uh, just to be able to come into the building and sing and, and, and listen to the studies about the, the Word of God and to understand why we must be saved or what we must do to be saved. Okay, he lives 154, then we're going to have an offering. Let's prepare to give, all right? We understand why we're giving. 154. And it's joyous. It's great to be in the building. The internet audience, X, YouTube, and Facebook, everyone. We all can give. Everyone can give. 50, 154. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is free. Come on. Whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice Come on. Of yes, Lord. and just the time I need him, he's always there. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me. Along life's narrow way, he lives, he lives, he lives. salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that He is leading through all the stormy paths. The day of His appearing will come at last. He Jesus lives today, today. And he, he walks, walks with me And talks with me Along life's narrow way He lives, he lives, he lives. Salvation to impart You ask me how I know he lives Thank you, Lord. He lives
pray for the offering, Lord. Gracious Father, thank you for the opportunity to give a love offering, Lord. We understand why we're giving, Lord. Bless those who have and bless those who have not, Lord. Lord, we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, it's really good to be in the building, to be in the building and to uh, participate in the love offering. And everyone, everyone is allowed to participate. And now we're going to remember the Lord's Supper. And we're here to celebrate. Come on, this is, this is a beautiful time. This is a beautiful time, the Lord's Supper. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 22. The bread is going to represent his body, the fruit of the vine, his blood. Amen. Amen. This is going to celebrate this one right here. We want to sing this song before, before we remember the Lord's Supper. 173. He's my king. 173. Praise the Lord. 173. He's my king. And we want to prepare for the Lord's Supper. All day long of Jesus I am singing. He's my So glad to be in the building. Amen. It's a glorious occasion. Good. All right, Luke chapter 22. We'll start at verse 1, then I'm going to drop down to uh, 17. Let's make ready. Now, the feast of the unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Verse 17. And he took the cup. And gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup at the supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. We understand it's not the cup, 
the fruit of the vine, the wine back then. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. I'm going to focus on what we read. I'm to turn thanks for the bread. It represents his body. This is given for us. Father, help us to focus on what we read and to um, we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> and the fruit of the vine which represents his blood, the one-time sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin. Christ's Father, help us to focus on what we read. Help us make the proper application. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Glorious occasion. Amen. This is glorious. <coughs> we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper. I'd like to read it again. I'd like to read it again. You calm down. Luke chapter 22, verse 1. Now the feast of the unleavened bread draw nigh, which is called the Passover. Verse 17. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourself. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks, break it, and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup at the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. It's a glorious occasion. Amen. Thank you. Such an honor to give to the Lord and to be in the building. I'm glad to be here. Amen. Amen. All day long, in rapture, pray my Savior. He is my blessed Savior. He is my King. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning, Arnold. <laughs> Uh, we'll turn our, uh, to the blue song book, number 10, Hallelujah. We'll do something a little different this morning. Sisters will lead and brothers will trail behind. All right, all right. There you go. <laughs> What's the number? Song number 10. Number 10 in the blue hymn books, please. Yep. We'll change it up a bit here. Sisters start off and we'll trail behind as men and brothers. Uh oh. <laughs> My goodness. Just need some teaching in here, isn't there? <laughs> no, Mr. Rapp. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. 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 To bear what a privilege it is to carry everything, everything to God in prayer. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Daughter doing a replacement. That's all right. Keep it in the family. That's all right. That's all right. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Greetings. We are back and alive once again. Live in living color. Welcoming those of you in YouTube, Facebook, and X uh, audience. And we're just grateful to the Lord for everything that He is doing has done, and will continue to do. That, that didn't sound like y'all got that. That didn't sound like y'all got that. It, it didn't sound like y'all got that. We're thankful for all that he's done, all that he's doing, and all that he will continue to do. Better. Y'all getting better. Y'all getting better, because he the only one can do it. I can't do it. Spence can't do it. Arnold can't do it. He the only one can do it. I mean, I, I'd have thought somebody ran down the aisle. Thank you. I don't know. Y'all y'all not ready for that yet. That's all right. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Y'all ain't ready for that. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 12 to the end. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12, I believe it's 21. Is that the last verse? Yeah. Yeah. 12 through 21. Right Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as the Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Thank the Lord for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I wanted, I wanted to give you a... a a framework. That's why I read uh, verses 12 uh, through 21. We are going to uh, look at part two of the authority of scriptures. Last week, 
Well, we were in 2 Timothy, and we dealt with the fact that the source of Scripture is God-breathed. Remember that? That's right. And when we start talking about uh, uh, authority, uh, authority is to be implemented in your life. Amen. No one can make you submit to God if you're not convicted that God is the authority. Does that make sense? Let me say it again. No one can make you submit to God if you're not convicted that God is the authority. God is the authority over the police, the fire department, and the president. So if you're not willing to submit to God, you're not going to submit to God's authority. If you don't think that God is the authority, you're not going to submit to what he says. So that, that's what I want you to see uh, today. Now, the book of Peter... Just to give you some background, the book of Peter was written to saints whose faith was going to be tried and to saints who were going to be persecuted. Okay. Peter himself was one of the three, which is called in theological circles, the inner circle, mm -hmm. uh, the inner circle of Jesus. There were three that Jesus took with him, Peter, uh, James and John. Because he didn't take everybody all the time. But you'll see instances where he took uh, Peter, James, and John. Uh, one common denominator we know about Peter, Peter would speak up. Jesus said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Y'all remember that? You remember when Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood. You have no life in you. And then Jesus knew who was going to leave him. And he turned to the disciples and said, will ye also go away? And Peter said, to whom shall we go? <laughs> See, Peter spoke up. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. When they spoke in tongues in Acts chapter 2, and then the people accused them of being drunk. Peter stood up with the 11 and said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. Oh, don't miss that. They're not drunk as you suppose. <laughs> so Peter was one who was quick on the draw, as we say. Peter was one who said that he would never deny Jesus. But, Pete, but Jesus told him, you're going to deny me. Yeah. And, but he told him, and, but he gave him a, a promise. That's one thing about Jesus. Jesus can give you bad news, but then give you good news about how you're going to turn out. Amen. Oh, you missed that. So, so he gave Peter some bad news. Yeah, listen, listen. And, and you know, the thing about it sometime that we miss, that Jesus could tell Peter something he was going to personally do to him and not hold it against him. No wow. He said, you're going to deny me, but, wa but watch what he says. But he says, but when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. So, so listen to what Jesus is saying to him. Jesus is saying, you're going to deny me, but I'm going to convert you to help the brethren. Because the only way he could be converted, he had to come back to what Jesus says. So the, the focus was still on Jesus, even though Peter had a mini departure. Right, right. So let's I, I'm, the, traditionally, there are things said that revolve around this text, such as uh, have you ever heard somebody say the scripture is not to be interpreted? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or somebody may say to you, let's just say when you're reasoning over scriptures, somebody may say to you, well, that's your uh, th that's your interpretation. And really, uh, th the battleground of understanding and, and correct application is in interpretation. The Bible never says don't interpret the scripture. Right. Exactly. But this is one of those uh, scenarios where because most people use King James, they get caught up. As a matter of fact, I shared with you last week when it said that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. The word translated inspiration doesn't give the true meaning of theonustos. Theonustos simply means God breathed. The word theo and nustos. Theo God, nustos breath. God breathed. 
I'm, I, that's the only Greek I'm going to give y'all. But, it, but it, it, it doesn't really give the indication of inspired because inspired could have many meanings. But when you say God breathed, listen to this, God breathed it on paper. See, so now you know the source. The source is God breathing on paper. But God is using human instruments to write what he breathed. Okay, okay. Now, now, the authority of scripture is not dependent on translation. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. That's right. no, it's not. Keep that in mind. Then let me explain what that means in case you don't understand what that means. When we say the authority of scripture is not dependent upon translations, there is no 100% accurate translation. Thank you. Here's the reason why. The reason why is because you have men who are fallible translating. Yes. So because you, now don't get me wrong, they did the best that they could, but there are a lot of things going on when you're bringing languages over from Hebrew and Greek to English, especially when it's Elizabethan English. Right. And I would even say more so in our modern English, words are so flexible. Really? So now, now watch this. Yep. So where's the authority? The authority is in the source. Yeah. In the, source. the source is God. The, the translation just relays or transmits what the authoritative source is saying, but you got to do some digging. Yeah. 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 You, you, you have to be willing to say, listen, even though you see a translation, you have to be willing to say, is this what he really said? Right. Yeah. I, I give you, I give you a, a, an example. Uh, for years in the Church of Christ, it was taught. You remember when God told Noah to build the ark? Yes. Right. And it said, build the ark of gopher wood. Right. And the word gopher is not a translation of a specific type of wood. It's just a transliteration of what the Hebrew word sounds like. But it was a doctrine made off a of gopher saying he had to use this specific wood, but it was just wood. <laughs> but because they transliterated that, see, now do you see when I say the power is not in the translation, the power is in the source. Okay, okay. Let me see if I can get, let me see if I can give you a, 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 another example on that. When, when you look, when you look behind the scenes, and I shared this with you before, most people who read Peter, the reason why they got the idea that the world would be burned up is because it says in Peter, a translation, that it would be burned up. But the word that's actually there in the Greek just means lay bare. Come on now. See how quiet you got? You see how quiet you got that fast? And I shared this with y'all before. So many people were saying, the world's going, the earth is going to be burned up. Well, that's because the English, listen to this. In that case, the original word in Greek was so close to the word that meant burnt up, the people who were doing the translating who had the ideology the world would be burned up just took the liberty of saying, well, let's put this word in there because that's what we believe anyway. That's right. Yes. Yes. Listen, listen. All translation committees don't use integrity in each case. Come on now. Teach it, bro. I'm gonna give, I'll give you an example. We're going to go into this this afternoon at 2 o'clock. You may have heard a brother in Christ say God made a covenant with the church. He didn't. God made a covenant with Israel. They were already the church. You know why? Because of how the word church is being portrayed. The word church has a meaning in our vernacular that has to be explained in scripture. Yes, yes, yes. See, if they just would have used the church, the word congregation or assembly, it wouldn't be no question. 
But because they use the word church, now people can say Baptist church, Methodist church, yes, Lutheran sir. church, Catholic church. If, but, but if they just would have said assembly, ain't no way you could do that. Right, right. Yes. Because see, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense in a scriptural uh, revelation. How can you say Baptist assembly and tie it down to scripture? You can't. Can't do it. Can't do it. Because listen to this. John never had an assembly. <laughs> John the Baptist never said, I will build my assembly. Sure. Did he? No. John the Baptist never said, I'm the head of an assembly. No. And as a matter of fact, Baptist in, 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 in revelation in scripture wasn't to start another assembly, <laughs> Baptist was nomenclature for the work John was doing. Yep. Yes. That's all it was. It was just what John was doing. What was John doing? Yes. Baptizing people. Well, actually, it, immersing people. Because even when you say the word baptism, you're not saying a translation. You're saying a transliteration. Amen. What's the difference? I know. I know. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what the difference is between translation and transliteration. Translation is when you bring a word over from another language. Transliteration is you make up a word based on how the original word sounds. So the Greek word for immersion is baptizo. But that sounds like baptism. Baptism is a transliteration because it sounds like baptizo. But see, if they would have translated baptizo as immersion, then how would somebody be sprinkling? Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get into the text. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to just walk through this until we get to uh, where I want to get to around verse 17 or 18. And I just wanted to back this up. Peter said, I won't be negligent to put you always in remembrance. Listen to what he says, though, you know them and you're established in the present truth. So two things that that Peter concedes to his audience you already know what I'm about to tell you, but I'm not going to ne neglect uh, putting, giving these things to you. And even though you're established in the present truth, I think that it's necessary that as long as I'm living to stir you up by keeping you in remembrance. You see how remember and remember yes. and then know and know, you know, you know, <laughs> listen. One thing about believers you can't get around in scripture is God wants you to have a memory of what he said to you. Mm -hmm. Now, now, now listen to this. Here, here's another thing that we get into, too, that I want you to see in, in this context. The people that Peter was writing to did not have a completed New Testament, as we say. So all they had was Old Testament. Right. So listen to this. So th the things that Peter is going to talk about when he talks about Jesus mm -hmm. are based on the Hebrew Bible or the prophets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that we have haven't done is we haven't had enough teaching in the Old Testament because we were always told it's the New Testament church. We're New Testament Christians. That's good to say New Testament, New Testament. But you can't throw away the Old Testament because this is what they preach from. And this is what they use to prove their point. When Paul said in Romans chapter three and he wrote, there is none righteous. No, not one. That was already said in the Old Testament. Testament. Oh, y'all missed that. That was all. Listen, when he built his argument on why all have sinned, all the quotations that he wrote were from the Old Testament saying people were sinning and people needed a savior. But but we missed that. Even when when it says love your neighbor as yourself, that was already in the Old Testament. That, that wasn't something that was given that, that was new. And even when Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, the new commandment was love as I love. Y'all see that the transition, love as I love. The transition is, I want you to love sacrificially like I love you. I want you to love even if it's not reciprocated. I want you to love even if they kill you. See, because they're, they're members of the body that, that will say, I'll only love 
as long as a brother or sister love me. And Jesus took care of that because he said even the nations, people that love them, they love. But I want you to be bigger than that. See, this is why Jesus was so radical, because Jesus said things that go against the norm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, I said to you, what makes it authoritative is the source. That's the difference between scripture and the daily news. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the difference, because when, when you're reading the newspaper and you say somebody writes an article about something, they're giving you an opinion yeah. Yeah, yeah. of something right. that happened. And, that, right. and, and in a lot of cases, they're not going to give you the true facts anyway. It's just like I give you a prime example. Fornication is not a crime in America. Nope. Morally right. acceptable. Yeah. That's right. Neither is adultery. Nope. That's right. Morally acceptable. Right. That ain't no crime. Nope. But you crack open that scripture. <laughs> you crack open scripture. That's a crime. That's why people can walk around hand in hand with somebody else's wife. And as you were talking about this morning, people shacking up and everything. Why? Ain't no crime. Look, as long as you pay taxes, they don't care if you live with 100 people. That's right. That's right. Being gay ain't no crime. That's right. Now, there's a lot of talk about, uh, what's the guy name that's in trouble? Diddy. 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 Here, here's the problem. Here, here, here's, no, but, but, but here, here's the real problem with all that's going on with that. If he's a child molester, he should have been caught. Ben. Ben. Now. Him being gay, that ain't no big deal to them. No, no it's not. No. It really ain't. Oh, that ain't no big deal to them. That, that, that's, listen, even to the gays, it's not a big deal because they don't respect the authority of God. When you don't respect the authority of God, you do anything. Anything. Because, the, the, listen to God's concern. God's concern, and you were hitting on it on your thing this morning, God's concern is the home That's right. husband wife children family right. now you you posted I, i'm gonna correct you on that because i love you Thank you posted there's dysfunction in every family no it's not no. Okay. is there dysfunction between father son and holy spirit that's a family no. talk to me if you right can now. talk to me if you can huh? Okay. huh there is no dysfunction in father son and holy ghost family no. That, that's the original family before anything was that's made. Right, that's right. So ain't no dysfunction in that. Or we could just say we need to fine tune that. Okay, thank you, bro. There are dysfunctions in the created order. There's dysfunction among angels. There's dysfunction among us. There's dysfunction among brothers. You saw dysfunction with Cain and Abel. How are you going to be jealous of your brother? And, and listen, and God gave him a chance. God said, if you do well, you'll be all right, Cain. Just all God was saying in layman's terms, do the right thing. That's all. That's all. Or sin, listen, sin is crouching. Right there. Right there. At, the door. at the door. Even in. So, so, so when, when you look at that, there are people that have learned how to function in dysfunction, so now it's accepted. Yep. Right. So he says, you see where it says, as long as I'm in this tabernacle? Yes. He's saying, as long as I'm in this, right. as long as I'm living, as long as I'm in this tent, I want to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Right. Let's go to the next verse. Because he said, I know I got to die. When he said, I got to put off my tabernacle, he said, the Lord showed me that I'm going to die. But as long as I'm in this tabernacle, I want to stir up your mind. I want to put this in your remembrance. Come on, verse 15. You go to the next slide. Verse 15? Yeah, come on, Brother Mario. And I will make every effort uh -huh. to see that after my departure. Now, listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. I'm putting something into this. I'm committed to this. After I die, I'm going to leave you something. Mm. That's what Peter's saying. I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease or after I'm dead to have these things in. There's our word again. Have these things where? In remembrance. In remembrance. In remembrance. 
All right, come on. Why? Now I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. Now, Christians got a short memory. Yes, yes we do. You don't think the Lord knew that we got short memories? Huh? That's why he gives us the Thank reminder. Lord. Thank you, Lord. You, do, do you know God has to remind us he's the only one? God reminds us he's holy. But, but also he reminds us he's forgiving. He reminds us of his love. He remind, Listen, every day you wake up is a reminder of his patience. Every day you reach in your cupboard and pull something out to eat, it reminds you of his provision, of how he provided. Every time you go to the Mac machine, he reminds you that I put you in charge of a little bit of money. Every time you take a step out of bed, he reminds you, I gave you life. You see the reminder? But we, we listen, you get out of bed and complain about the ache and pain when you ought to be rejoicing about the ability. Amen. Everybody, listen, there are some people that, can, that would love to switch places with you and say, I can't even get out of bed, but I'd love to get out of bed with a pain and take a walk. And you complaining about the pain in a walk? I'll switch places with you any day. And listen, yes. and listen, and God is blessing them both. Yes. Yes. Just because the one can't get out of bed don't mean he's not being blessed by God. Oh, Just yeah. like the one that's getting out of bed complaining don't realize the blessings of God being able to get out of bed. Yeah, I'm in a little yes. bit of pain. Yes. Yeah, it don't feel right. Yes. Yeah, I wish it would go away. Yes. But at least I'm up and moving. Yes. All right. Amen. Look, everything, is. you start getting out. The Tuesday night, I had to... Uh, yes. I, I called the bro. I said, boy, I bit down on some fish sticks. And everything always happened on the weekend. <laughs> and some of my mouth said, crunch. <laughs> and I said, that don't sound too good. And, and it ain't the fish stick. <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a feeling saying, that's the end of me. <laughs> so that, you know, you start getting old. Thing. It don't matter how much you brush your teeth, how much you floss. Things going to happen. Like, I brush twice a day. I floss. The stuff's still cracking up and breaking down. <laughs> hey. Not a shame, though. No. No. Amen. Don't have no reason to be ashamed. Don't have no reason to be ashamed. So, he said, I want you to have these things. Always. Yes. Not sometime. Not when you feel like it. I want you to have it always. Oh, Why? Mm -hmm. Come on. For next verse. We, for we did not Follow. Let's, let's, let's listen to what Peter says. I'm going to give you the reason on, why yeah. I want you to have these things. Hmm? We weren't followers of Farrakhan. No. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories. Listen, listen. Don't you know that there are some cunningly, mm. cleverly Very. devised, yes, he yeah. said, fables. Mm. That's a myth and a lie. And yeah. Peter said, we ain't following nothing like that. <laughs> listen, listen. L let me tell you this. There are people that'll say uh, Christianity, as they say, was an, an invention that the so-called white man gave the black slaves. The problem with that statement is Jesus gave it before you started calling him white. Mm. Right now. Uh oh. Sure did. Yes, he did. Huh? Peter preached the message before anybody was identified as white or any other. Uh, with the, it was, you know, in Peter's world, it was only two nationalities. Yep. You got quiet. You got quiet. Let me run the take back again. In Peter's world, you're right, sis. In Peter's world, in Paul's world, in the apostles' world, in Jesus' world, there were only two types of nationality. You either were a Jew or you were a Gentile. That's right. That's right. But what happened? Somebody came along and said, we got to separate these people. We got to separate them across the lines. So as things evolved, people started 
given uh, national names to people. Oh, wow. but, but, but here's the thing. Notice, even the names they gave the people to give them a so-called race, that didn't change that. <laughs> Listen, that didn't change the word. Why? Because God don't change. So his word transcended all that time, even with races being named, and God's word still says you need to repent and be baptized. And trust in my son. This has nothing to do with what, and let me say this also. Because someone tries to corrupt something, that doesn't change what the truth of it is. Look, 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 watch this. Because somebody says Christianity is a white man's religion, the first thing they got to prove is who's the white man that started it. <laughs> there you go. And, and, and if then listen, and if you show me a white man that started it, I'm going to say that can't be the one who started it because the one who started it was the one who got up from the grave and he wasn't white. That's no, right. Man. See, because you put a listen, you put a race and a color on somebody that God didn't even put on. them. Right. That's right. See, now you, you got these when you talk about cunningly devised fables. Now, the Hebrew Israelites use words that are in Scripture. The word Hebrew is in Scripture and the word Israel is in Scripture. The only problem they don't understand is the Israelites that God is speaking to today are the Israelites, not of the flesh, but of the spirit. That's right. That's right. Now, that, that's the part that they don't understand. What do you mean, Reggie? Because I know some of them may be watching. Well, what do you mean you're talking about Israel of the spirit? Well, all of us are Jews. That's right. That's right. All right, I got to prove my point. I, now I got to take a sidebar. Go to Romans 2, Brother Mario. Come on to Romans 2. Yeah. Let's take the Roman road. I think I want Romans 2 around 23, 24. Romans 2. If not, I got enough scribes in here to get me the, the right verse. At 23. <laughs> Romans 2 at 23. Yeah. And it reads. Mm hmm that what I want, Arnold? For he is not a Jew? You who said that people should not commit adultery. Further down? Okay. I, I know it's in the 20s. 28. I know it's in the 20s. Yeah, okay. Come on. And it reads, a person is not a Jew. A what? A person is not a Jew. You mean to tell me, uh, what about a black person? A person is not a Jew. You mean a black person ain't a Jew? A person is not a Jew who is only, who is one only outward. Hold it. Hold it. You mean it? Wait a minute. Are you reading that right? Yes. A person is not a Jew who is one only outwardly. <laughs> Y'all see how simple this is? Huh? Huh? Now, what are they talking about outwardly? Skin color. Yep. Flesh. Yep. I believe King, you got King James? King What's King James say? He is not a Jew who is one outwardly. Yep. Neither is that. Circumcision, Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, which is outward in the flesh. Mm -hmm. but, but see, don't run over that. Don't run over my butt. <laughs> but he is a Jew. But he is a Jew. Which is listen. He is a Jew. But he is a Jew. That go for women too. He is a Jew. Which is one inwardly uh -oh. and circumcised. I wish we I, I, I wish we could get Barb on camera. Oh yeah. So I could show the Hebrew Israelite she's a Jew. Show <laughs> I know she would be ashamed to come on camera. God, but I put her right on camera. You see her? She's a Jew. Come on up here, Sister Barb. We gonna show the world. We gonna show the world. Come on up here. In case they watching. Now read the verse. She's a Jew. She's a Jew just like me. But he is a Jew. He is a Jew. Which is one inwardly. Which is one inwardly. Yeah. That is of the heart. Are you, is your heart circumcised? Absolutely. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. You see that? 
Y'all gonna hear about this. Yeah, you will. Y'all gonna hear about this. Listen, now listen, 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 listen. listen, listen. You know what's gonna happen? Folk in the Church of Christ gonna say I had her up preaching. <laughs> Somebody gonna see a clip and they right, they're gonna take that clip and twist it. Did y'all see he had that sister up there? Yeah, I had her up there showing you who a Jew was. That's what I was doing. Let's go back to the text. That's right. That's all I was doing. That's right. Listen, listen. No, go back. Go, go back to that, brother Ron. I forgot that last part. Oh, that's good stuff, yes. right? At the end of that. Yeah, yeah. And not in the letter. Listen, not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. Come on. Yes. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed How you that. Like that. Y'all missed that. All right, let's go back to the text. Let's go back to the text. Let's go back. Second Peter. So, so listen. Listen to this. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. Right. So, so you can't get over with me to say because I'm black, I'm Israel, I'm Israel because I'm of Christ. That's why Sister Barb is of is uh, is Israel, because she's of Christ. God doesn't use a bigoted racist theology to say who he is. As a matter of fact, some people say God is black. How God going to be black? <laughs> God is invisible. Amen. God is immortal. Who ever seen God? Mm-hmm. Now some people say, yeah, this, this person saw God. Well, somebody may have saw his back parts. But God said, can't nobody see my face and live. So ain't no sense in you putting up an image of a black man with a big nose and big lips and dreadlocks and saying that's God. Because that ain't God either. I don't know who that is. That, that's, that's somebody's uncle or something. But that, that ain't God. <laughs> Might be somebody's drunk uncle. Who knows? Go ahead. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. Stories. Mm-hmm. When we told you about the coming of our Lord. Jesus. When we told you about the power and coming of our Lord. He, you know what Peter's saying? Peter's saying that we didn't follow a lie when we told you how great Jesus was. Amen. Now listen to this. Folk will say, well, Jesus never said uh, celebrate his birthday. Well, Peter said we didn't follow cunningly devised fables when we told you about the power and coming of Jesus. Well, in order for Jesus to come, didn't he have to be a baby? Didn't he have to be born? So, so whether you say the coming is him being born or whether you say the coming is his second coming, I got you on both bookends. What do you mean, Reggie? Because he was a he was a man as a baby in the flesh, and he's coming back as a man in the flesh now I know what you're going to say I know what you're going to say I know what you're going to say you're going to say well when he got up what body did he come in well why don't you just let Jesus tell you why don't you, why don't you just let Jesus tell you he, he approached Thomas because Thomas didn't believe the report and then Jesus said, handle me and see. Yeah. Didn't he say that? Yeah. And he said, put your hand in my side. And he said, believe. Right. And when Thomas put his hand in Jesus' side, he said, the Lord of me and the God of me. Yeah. You know what Thomas was saying when he said the Lord of me and the God of me? He said, you're resurrected. What you said was true, that you would get up. Because listen, if Jesus had never got up, he'd have been the biggest false prophet ever. Now, now the watchtower say when Thomas says, my Lord and my God, you know how sometimes people exclaim like they'll something will happen they'll just say my lord or something something bad happened w- w- listen to this you know how you know that it wasn't that or a figure of speech because nothing bad happened something good happened That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hey, listen listen Thomas <laughs> Jesus was verifying to Thomas it's me and I'm resurrected That's right. So, so how could that have been? Uh, what had Jesus been telling them? Destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up. Jesus had been telling them before Abraham was, 
I am. He had been walking around telling them, my father works, so I work. I'm the resurrection. Matter of fact, the, the people knew Lazarus' sister said, Lord, if you had have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Well, he waited around. He waited around a couple days to, 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 to show you what he was working with. Move the stone. And then they even pushed back against that. When he said move, he, when he said move the stone, he said, Lord, by now he stinks. He said, I ain't worried about what he smell like. Just do what I tell you to do. See, he's he not worried about this. See, see what people are worried about? They worried about the smell. Rather than just doing what he, he told you to move the stone. He can handle a rest because he could have moved the stone. He could have did both. I mean, I would have been like, just move the stone. Be like, help me move the stone. I'm getting my brother back. No question. Lazarus, come forth. Here he come. You say, how, how, did, how he come back like that, Reggie? Because it say he was bound in the grave clothes. He, he ain't come out like this. When they wrap you up, you wrap you up. Now, now, listen to this. Listen. L listen to what he said. We didn't follow myths, yep. right? But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Eyewitnesses. What are you saying, Peter? What I'm saying is I s we saw it with our own eyes. We saw it with our own eyes. Now, now and then he's going to give an explanation of this. Verse 17 says what? He received honor and glory from God the Father. When? When the voice came to him. You, you, weren't y'all on that this morning? Yes. Huh? Yeah. He received Sir. honor and, and glory. glory. From God the Father. Now, now I, I thought God didn't have a son. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. According to the Muslims and yeah. Geno Jennings, I thought God ain't had no son. I guess God be yet. Matter of fact. Peter even qualified because the text says God the Father. He, listen, he, which is Jesus, received yes. from God the Father, so he received from the Father honor and glory. Yes. So listen to this. So the Father is giving honor and glory to the Son. See that right, right in this text. See, they can't touch it to save their life. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Sometimes there's a possibility that when you read that text, you looked at it and you saw when he talked to John the Baptist and he was baptized and because of the baptism you say well God was pleased with him because he was baptized God was always pleased with him he was always pleased with him. listen 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 there's nothing that Jesus did that displeased God I don't know if you ever think about that. There's nothing Jesus did that displeased oh God. God. God has always been pleased with everything that Jesus did. Yeah. Now, 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 now watch this. Watch this. That was his son. So he was pleased with his son. But listen to this. The voice is saying to, and it was the inner circle, the voice, the ones that went on the mountain, the, excuse me, when he was baptized, the voice is saying to them, that's my son. And I'm well pleased with him. Now, now there was another occasion where Jesus was transfigured. Remember? And then there was, there, then there was Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. Moses is the representative of the law. Elijah is the representative of the prophets. And Jesus is the representative of the new order. And then Peter, Peter again. Shall we make three? Remember? Let, let's make three temples. One for Moses, one for Elijah, one for Jesus. What, now God got to straighten that out. Moses had his time. Elijah had his time. Now my son is shining. 
Hear ye him. <laughs> All right. So listen to this. Peter says, we heard this voice from heaven. Yes. When we were with him in, in the Holy Mount. Now we're going to get into the, the, the lesson. Y'all ready? Yeah. That was just the introduction. I know. 12, through, 12 through 18 is the introduction. That's it. The lesson is 19 through 21. Mm -hmm. Y'all ready to unpack? All right, watch the text. 19. Watch the text. We also, it's 19. Yeah, 19. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. Mm hmm And you will do well uh -huh. to pay attention to it. Yeah. As Whole to, lot in here. Whole lot in here. Go ahead. As to a light shining in the dark place. Uh-huh. Until the day draws until the day dawn yeah. and the morning star rises in your heart. Now listen to this. Listen to this. This verse is actually talking about scripture. Watch the text mm -hmm. of what the prophet said. Now here, here's another thing with the King James where it says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. The more accurate term would be the prophetic word, meaning the word that was given by the prophet that was written down. Now, how is the word more sure? I don't, I don't want you to get confused on this because some people do. Peter is not saying that the prophetic word is more sure because of his experience because of what he heard, because watch this. Everybody didn't hear God say that. Nope. Okay. All right, let me run that back to you again. Let me run that back to you again. I think you just got it. Listen, everybody didn't hear God say that because listen, Matthew and Luke wasn't written yet. All right. So the only people that would have heard God say that were the people that were there. Well, who was there? Jesus, Peter, James, and John. There was no gospel for them to go back to, open it up and say, I remember when he said that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. See, see I, I know what happened. This is what happened to many of us. Because we have a completed book of scripture, we always know what the reference is. But if you were living at that time to who Peter was writing to, you wouldn't have the reference of when God said that. Why? It wasn't written yet. That's right. That's right. So, so, so he says, we have. Yes. That, that's your present tense verb. Right. What do we have that's a more sure word of prophecy? Yeah, Peter's saying, it's not what I experienced but it's what was written about Jesus in the prophets that I saw come true. Right, right, right. All right, all right. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me rewind the tape, see how I can say that. That's good stuff in there. When you were on it this morning, so let me use that. When Isaiah talked about his servant that would judge the nations, Peter is writing now to the people of God. Now we see. That was true and that was fixed when he said who have believed our report and he was led as a sheep to slaughter and he took the iniquities of us all. Now I see that the word is more sure when he said his name shall be called wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace, the everlasting father. Peter said now I see that the word is more sure when it says a virgin shall be with child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, now I see that the word is more sure. Come on, yes. Are y'all seeing that? That's what he's talking about. What, what remains is what's written. So, so listen to this. This is why, watch this. This is why when someone tries to tell you they heard from God, you can say to them, you know what? That's all good. That's fine if you say that. But I got something more sure yes. that I don't need your testimony. Yes. Listen to this. I know what you heard, Peter. But Peter's telling the people, yeah, I heard God's voice. Yeah, I experienced what God said. But we, you got something that's more sure because you got the prophetic utterance yes. written down. Y'all yes. 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 got that? All right. so, so somebody come to you and say, somebody come to you and say, you know what? God spoke to me last night. Mm -hmm. 
You can say, he did? Mm-hmm. Well, what did he say? <laughs> and then they start babbling on about what they say God said. And then, they, then you, you know what you say to them? You say, well, show that to me. That's it. Because, because listen to this. What Peter is talking about is what was written about Jesus. <laughs> listen, listen. There's nothing for God to tell anybody today about Jesus that's not already written. Let me push that further. Let me push that further. I believe there are over 200 prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus, and Jesus fulfilled every one of them. What you going to add? What you going to add to the Old Testament? You can't, you can't go back and add it to the Old Testament. So what did God tell you that they didn't know about Jesus? Matter of fact, bring something up about Jesus, and I guarantee you, I'm going to go right to the scripture. Somebody said, well, God, well, uh, God appeared to me in a vision and told me Jesus was the Messiah. I can read that. (laughs) Well, God appeared to me and told me Jesus was going to die for the world. I can read that. Somebody said, yeah, God appeared to me and told me Jesus was going to get up the third day. I can read that. You got to give me something I can't read. There's nothing you can give me about Jesus that hasn't already been said. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why when these people run around talking about, well, you know what, uh, they, w- w- you know, when that, what's, what's, what just happened at, uh, what they call that, the eclipse? Yeah. Yeah. When the eclipse kept happening, yeah. and then people started posting scriptures yeah. about, you know, the end of the world, and yeah. they're, they're going to be wars, you know, they posted things about Iran and Israel, and they always post the scriptures, they're going to be wars, and rumors of war, and, and the eclipse, and I, I had to post, you know, this, here's a public service announcement, Jesus is not coming back in the eclipse. So just buy your glasses, watch it, and then keep life going like it's been going. Listen, 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 listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. If there was a sign to alert you that Jesus was coming, some folk would try to get right. <laughs> Could you imagine if they knew the sign? If they said, you know what? The sign is the eclipse in 2024. Boy, folk be like, baptize me today. But, but listen, but listen. The, the utterance is, I'm coming like a thief in the night. So, so, so Jesus says, here's ten virgins. Five wise, five foolish. Some got oil, some don't. What's, what's the theme of the parable? There were five prepared and five that were unprepared. And then the ones that was unprepared tried to get oil from the ones that were prepared. And they said, they said we ain't missing this. <laughs> You go back to the store and get your own oil. We ain't missing this. That's why if you watch the eclipse or whatever you did, you should have been resting easy. Even so, come Lord Jesus, but that ain't it. And listen, listen, but watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's, let's, let's push this up a little further. How is it that people could see the eclipse and deny God? All right now. All right now. Like, you st- listen. When the eclipse happened, mm-hmm. I guarantee you somewhere on God's planet, somebody was in bed with the wrong person. That's right. That's right. That's right. That eclipse ain't mean nothing. The bars that was open during the night of the eclipse, you don't think somebody was at the bar? Here another round. Look, looking in the bar with the eclipse glasses on. Where's the eclipse? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't even go outside and look, just looking around the bar. For it. <laughs> That's the world for you. That's the world for you. See, God will show his power through a tsunami or anything else, and people's business as usual. That's why Jesus said, just like somebody say, well, uh, it wasn't no flood in the days of Noah. Well, Jesus said it was. Jesus said, just like in the days of Noah, eating, drinking, and giving in marriage until the flood came. That's right. 
Somebody say, ain't no whale swallow no person. That wasn't no true story about Jonah. Well, Jesus said it was true. Jesus said he was in there. You see how you can just go back to Jesus? Somebody try to say something ain't right and say, why Jesus believe it? So now you see what that more sure word is, right? Peter saying, you don't take my experience, even though I heard it, because we have the written word, that prophetic utterance. That's what's more sure and fixed that you're going to continue to have. Because everybody couldn't, nobody could turn to Matthew and say, as we did this morning, this is my beloved son and who I'm well pleased. It wasn't there to read. That's why, that's why an experience is not authoritative. Y'all got that? Experiences are not authoritative. The word is authoritative. Because pe people will tell you anything. Yeah, I saw God and God promised me this. I saw this. I saw that's your experience. Maybe you did see something, but that's not the authority. That's right. That's not the authority. Because next time somebody say something, I'm going to say, oh, that's your experience? Are you resurrected yet? <laughs> See, now, now you got them. See, that now, is, now they're in check. Did you die and were you resurrected or are you in a body that's going to die? Let them lie and say, I'm resurrected. And if you outlive them, you'll see. Yes, now, notice what Peter says. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Y'all good yes. with that? Yes. Okay. Where until you do well that you take heed is unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Listen, listen. Most of us, to show you this metaphor and this illustration, because we live in a world where you can hit a light switch, mm -hmm. this probably goes over our head that you do well, you take heed to a light that shines in a dark place. Mm -hmm. There was no electricity in this day. Right. So could you imagine being in a home and when it got dark, the only thing you got is a candle. Yeah. So now that candle, listen, listen, right. even with that one candle illuminating just a little section, he said, you take heed just like you would look if you're doing something and you got that light, but you're in a dark place and you're walking around. That light is your only means. Yeah. See us, we turn on a light, whole building light up. But back then you be in a dark room, that candle. Matter of fact, you going to guard that candle and you going to make sure it stay lit or else you going to be pitch black. So he said, you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Well, who's that day star? That's Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the morning star. Jesus is the day star. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, verse number 20. Knowing this first. What I need you to know first. That no pro prophecy... Of the scripture. Didn't I tell you that the word of prophecy is talking about the scripture? Yes. That's what I wanted you to see. He, now he said, this is what I want you to know. That no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. Now, now, this is where people read. And let's just say I'm reading a verse. Let's say Spencer read a verse. And then I say, well, I think it means this. So they say, no, I don't mean that, Reg. Uh, it means this. That's just your interpretation. That's how people use this verse. That's not what Peter's talking about. Listen, Peter's not talking about people having differences in how they understand Scripture. He's talking about the person who gave, listen, the person who wrote down God's revelation. It wasn't from them and their thoughts. Right, exactly. A better translation would be, and I don't know if it's in yours, Darius, a better translation would be, no scripture is of any private unloosening. Yeah, Mine's have, um, above all, you know this, no prophecy of scripture comes from the prophet's own interpretation. There you go. But see, now it's still using interpretation. So, so, so what we're looking at is the, the, what was written prophetically by the prophet was not his own idea of what was going to happen. You know how you know that that can't be true? The reason how you know that it can't be true is because how can all these prophets, and some of them didn't know each other, report the same report about the same person doing the same thing? All right, now. Wow. Listen, when one prophet said he'd be born in Jerusalem, where you, where, excuse me, Bethlehem, house of bread, where you think Jesus was born? Bethlehem, Bethlehem house of bread. Bethlehem. Right? So every prophet, even though they didn't know each other, they said the same thing about the same person doing the same thing. And what he did, he did the thing. 
But they didn't know each other. All the prophets, all the prophets didn't know each other, but they wrote about him. Now, so, 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 so that, that's how you look at that, that, that framework. Knowing this first, because so you see how he's backing up his point about we have a more sure word of the prophetic utterance. He's saying what you need to know is it's not from the prophet himself. Right. He didn't get this based upon his own agenda or his own idea. Here's the other thing I, I can put on top of that. The prophet wouldn't have been smart enough to do it. Nope. Right. Exactly. How can a prophet write about somebody he don't know? And then be accurately say what he, who he don't know what he did. Accurate. They were accurate. Here's another thing. Here's another thing. There were times when a prophet wrote and he didn't even understand his own prophecy. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's <laughs> I mean, he wrote it by inspiration, uh, by God breathing, but he didn't even understand what he was saying. And to show you how that is, one of the probably the most powerful question in the scripture, other than what must I do to be saved is, do you understand what you're reading? <laughs> because nobody wants to say no. What do you mean? How is it the Ethiopian eunuch? Now, he had a scroll of Isaiah. He's reading from the scroll of Isaiah. And his question was, well, who's the prophet talking about? Remember that? Who is the prophet talking about? Is he talking about himself? Or is he talking about some other man? So what did Philip have to do? Philip got to come into the chariot. Here's the thing. Sometimes we, we, we gloss over. He comes into the chariot. How does he get Jesus and baptism out of Isaiah 53? He didn't just get Jesus. He got Jesus and Isaiah out of Isaiah 50. Well, back then it wasn't 53, but he got that out the scroll. And our, in our Hebrew Bible, it's Isaiah 53. How did he get baptism out of that? Now, somebody may say, well, how do you know he got baptism out of that? Because he, he began at the same scripture and preached Jesus. That's why. And then it said, as they went on their way, he said, see, here's water. Hey, hey. But the, the only point of reference we got is Isaiah 53. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. I guess you, you go home and look for that now. Where's baptism in Isaiah 53? <laughs> so no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. I'm coming down. Yes. I think I'm on time, too. I'm for on the, time. Go ahead. For the prophecy came not. Listen, in listen, 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 listen. Watch this now. Listen to this. Do y'all not know that Peter is talking about the Old Testament scriptures? Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about New Testament. He's talking about the prophetic writings that are in what's called the Hebrew Bible. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. What does that tell you? Man's will was not involved in the revelation that was given. Y'all got that? Man's will was not involved in the revelation. Well, who's the source? That's why I started off last week with the source. Who's the source? All scripture is God breathed. Now, now watch this. Watch this. This is going to show that the Holy Spirit is God. Except it's just going to say it in a different way. Watch the text. Mm -hmm. Come on, Brother Mario. For the prophecy came not in the old times. By the will of man. So, so Jeremiah, Isaiah, Zechariah, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Malachi, David, Moses, their will had nothing to do with the unloosening of the revelation. Nothing. Listen, listen. You would have never known. That Yahweh met Moses at the burning bush unless Moses wrote it down. You know why? Because only Moses was there. <laughs> now, 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 now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. To show you that they had access and understood the writing of the Old Testament. When Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am, 
they made the connection that I am spoke to Moses and Jesus was saying, I'm him. That's right. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. That's what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying the one that talked to Moses at the burning bush. I am. That's me. Now, let me show you some more authority. Let me show you some more authority. You remember when Yahweh met Moses and he said, I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. That's right. right. And one of one of the things that Moses said was. What's your name? Yeah. <laughs> Why? You ever thought about what that means? Because name shows authority and the character of the person. Yes. Listen, 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 listen. Pharaoh had gods in Egypt, but Pharaoh didn't have Yahweh. Right, right. Hold it. Yahweh is going to let Pharaoh know his name so that he could show Yahweh is the God above all gods. Oh, my goodness. Listen, the judgment, the judgment was on the gods of Egypt because that's what they trusted in. Listen, but Moses is coming with Yahweh saying he's the judge that judges gods. Oh, y'all missed that. Oh, y'all missed that. Listen, God, Yahweh judges gods. That's right. King of kings. So listen, so the magicians could do a couple things, but then even the magicians had to own up to the fact this Yahweh, we can't touch this. Our, our magic only goes but so far. Listen, listen. Here's something else. Listen. God used Pharaoh to show his power. And listen, I, I don't know if y'all ever realize this. Do you know, if you really think about it, it was ten plagues. Yeah. Pharaoh could have been saved if he just would have said the jig is up. Yeah. Yeah. But instead, listen, instead, because of his belief system, he was willing to die in a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be willing to die in no lie. Yeah. Listen, 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 listen. If, if I'd have saw the reed sea opened up and people walking on it, I ain't chasing nobody. I would have been saying, I'm with y'all. I ain't listen. I ain't chasing nobody trying to kill them, cause I knew once they got there it was closed, and then all of a sudden it opened up. I'm like, I'm riding with y'all. I'm like, exactly, exactly. I'm like, yo. Later, look, deuces, Egypt. And look, Pharaoh, you, bye. I'm rolling with Moses. So, 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 so watch this. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. No. But, but, holy men of God, yes. spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Listen, I thought all scripture is given is God breathed. Yes. It is. But holy men of God were moved by the Holy Ghost. How do you put those two together? Because then the Holy Ghost got to be God. Now, he's not the father, but the Holy Ghost is just as divine as the father is. Why? Because some verses may say God moved them. Some verses will say the Holy Spirit. You just read one, didn't you? Didn't you? Listen, listen, li listen to this. How were they moved? That just simply mean in, in their utterance or writing, they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. It wasn't their will. It was the Holy Spirit carrying them. That's right. Y'all got that? Oh, that's good. That's a good place to stop. I'm yeah. I'm I'm on time. I'm on time. If you're out there watching, you're out there watching. Why not submit to the authority of Scripture? Jesus has been proven true. Listen, listen. There's no way you can read Scripture and say the Scripture ain't about Jesus. That's right. 
There's no way you can read scripture and say you don't need to be saved. Because it's the scriptures is a redemptive book. So scriptures are going to show you you're a sinner, you can't save yourself, and you need to be saved by the Lord. You say, well, all right, since you told me all that, preacher, I see where I'm at. How, how, can, I, how can I save myself? I'm glad you asked. You believe that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and that he rose again the third day because he took your place. Yes, that's, right. that's what he did. He, he, he took your place. He died for you. Believe that with all your heart. Repent of your sins. Turn from your way of life from being uh, rejecting God and receive God. Receive, listen, receive the message. Or you end up like this morning in Isaiah 53. Who have believed our report? And listen to this. Watch this. And to whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? Don't you know the arm of the Lord that's been revealed is Jesus dying for you? That's the power of God being revealed. Repent of your sins. Confess Jesus as who he is. You heard the father say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Why don't you make that confession that you believe that he's God? God said he was his son and God can't lie. Just say the same thing that God said and we'll immerse you in water today. We don't. There's no such thing as a baptismal Sunday or baptized on Easter or baptized on Christmas. When someone wants to submit to the gospel and they believe Jesus, you baptize them then. You know why? You know why? You know why you baptize them then? So you can send them home resurrected. That's right. That's right. Yep. You, know, you know what happens? Because they don't preach the gospel, they send people home dead every Sunday. Yeah, right now. Mm, y'all don't miss that. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Listen, when you don't preach the proper response to the gospel, you send people home dead every Sunday. When you preach the proper response, you send people home not only resurrected, but walking in the newness of life. Amen. Resurrected, forgiveness. walking in the newness of life, and in the realm of forgiveness. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, I'm sorry. No, here. No, here. You take that. Here. Thank you, sir. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. In fact, it's all the more reason why to be happy and joyful. Amen. Thank the Lord for the wonderful words that are brought forth this morning and this afternoon with Arnold and with Reginald. Uh, again, keep the brothers in prayer, you know, for the work and labor they do, along with Spencer. And, you know, keep everyone in prayer because this is not an uh, easy work. It's easy, but it's not easy. So, closing now with the song, we'll go to song number I want to sing. I did, I did, but I, but I, I want to sing something more, uh, more psalmy. Yeah. But it's all right, you know. All right, amen, amen. You know what? We haven't sung this in a while. Distracted by the world, in the song number six, in the blue song book. Yeah. It fits with the lesson. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, again, thank Brother Reginald and thank uh, Arnold. Again, like I said, that we want to thank our brethren and continue to pray for them because. And I'm not boasting, saying that this congregation is better, by no means, by no means I'm not. We have to be thankful for what we have here. We have men who are willing to really delve deep, I mean deep, Hallelujah. deeper and deeper and deeper Amen. into the scriptures. You know, this is not a, 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 a blessing that many congregations can enjoy. They can but you have many other disciples who, you know, many men who are not willing to go that far. You know, so let's again, let's keep Reggie, Arnold, Spencer, all brother in prayer, please. Amen. And thank the Lord. Amen. All right, let's, let's get some. 
Have you started with the high resolve of serving the Lord? Did you make the Savior first in your life? Then be careful not to stray too far from reading His Word. It will help to shield you from a world of strife. Don't be distracted by the world. Don't be distracted by the world. The dazzling lights, the tempting sounds you'll hear. But your temptation so alone, you'll find your pathway seems unsure. Remember that the Lord is always near. The Apostle Paul wrote Timothy in days long ago that his friend named Demas had forsaken him. Having loved this present world with all the things that the Lord, he did stray from light to walk in shadows dim. Don't be distracted by the world, don't be distracted by the world. The dazzling lights, the tempting sounds you'll hear. But your temptation so alone, you'll find your pathway seems unsure. Remember that the Lord is always near. There are many who have given up their worldly pursuits just to follow in the steps of the Lord. But before too long we find their whole attention was turned Thus they lost the blessing of this sweet accord Don't be distracted by the world, don't be distracted by the world The dazzling lights, the tempting sounds you hear Push your temptation so low, you'll find your pathway seems unsure Remember that the Lord is always near Amen Good words of encouragement. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our heavenly, most gracious, most loving God, our Father, most holy Adonai, Yeshua, most holy Spirit, we thank you for the wonderful words that you've given us. We thank you for your blessing you bestow upon us every single day. We thank you for your love, your loving kindness, your mercy, your mercifulness, your graciousness, your compassion. We thank you and for your providential love father we thank you for everything you are blessed and holy you are great you are everything you're the source of life source of love you're everything father for without you there will be nothing that will be able to exist you're the god of all creation and we pray father you may help us to always remember to give you that praise and honor and, and and gratitude for who you are and what you are and what you're doing in our lives Help us, Father, to be like you, to love like you, and to even go into that spiritual, supernatural love, Father, that, that's beyond our human nature, Father, to be like you and to be like the Lord Yeshua. Help us, Father, to not be ashamed of your holy words. Help us, Father, to not seek to please this world, nor even please our selfish self, Father, but to please you, to be a delight to you, Father. And help us, Father, to surrender our will to you. Most Holy Father, we pray that the words are brought forth this morning and into this afternoon, and even for the ones that will be brought forth this afternoon, may continue to resonate in our minds and continue to teach us and enlighten us. Mm -hmm. Most Holy Father, we just thank you for everything. Blessed are you. We thank you for all the beautiful, all the good, all the bad, and all the ugly that's been going on in our lives, Father. Mm -hmm. Those experiences, those interactions with people, yes, those Lord. circumstances, those events, those, those, those situations, Father, we just thank you because you're teaching us and, we, and you also show us that regardless of how great things are or how worse things can be, that you are still with us. Mm -hmm. We just thank you for that. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, announcements. This, uh, not, well, this upcoming Sunday will be the uh, fellowship that's out there in Cook.